Hey, welcome to the Honey and Harry Show. I'm Honey. And I'm Harry. Today, I have a very, very special guest, my daughter, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. And um, we're going to talk today about her um, breast cancer diagnosis, uh, since it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And um, we're going to talk about, you know, her journey and also some of the things that helped her for other people that may not know some of the things that we did that really got us through. So, hey, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, so why don't you tell us, like, how old you were? How did you find out? It was COVID. It was such a weird time. So. Yeah, I was 29 COVID had just began in March of 2020, and I had been home for a couple of weeks with the kids, and it was just madness. Nobody really had a schedule. Nobody was going to school. Um, you know, we were trying to do some school at home and hang out with the neighbors and play, and um, there was just really um, no rhyme or reason to anything we were doing, and I had gotten a text message that it was time for my yearly checkup at Women's Hospital. Um, and it was the uh, middle of uh, beginning of May. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, no, I am not going to go we get We didn't want to rescue getting COVID. Yes, yeah. I didn't want to go get COVID. I didn't want to stand in line and get my temperature taking and all that kind of stuff. It was just a, the thought of going to the doctor during COVID was a headache. And so I had called you, and I had kind of mentioned it to you, and you were like, no, you need to go. Just go use it to get out the house, to get away from the kids, just get a little break. And so the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I, I kind of am going crazy in the house, so I guess I could use this as a way to get out the house. And I don't know, uh, just do something besides play with the kids all day. So... My, my mom, she came over, and um, I remember standing in the line outside of Women's Hospital with my mask on, and there was a long line because every single person that came in couldn't have anyone with them, and then all had to have their temperature taken. There was a process to let everyone in. And so I remember standing in that line and texting my husband saying, I don't know why I came here. I should have went and got lunch by myself. I should have went and got a coffee. I don't know why I'm here. And sure enough, I waited and um, I, I went through the line and then I got into the doctor's office and I saw Dr. Rebecca Boudreau. She's my OBGYN. She is fantastic. Um, I absolutely adore her. And um, it was just my, my yearly checkup that all girls have to go to. Um, I I had never felt anything. I never suspected that something was wrong Again, with me. Again, you're 29. I'm 29. Healthy. Um, I was just about to start teaching climb at my Pilates studio. I was a collegiate athlete. Um, I'd like to think I was healthy most of my life. And so I went in and Dr. Boudreaux was doing the breast examination and she goes, do you feel that right there? And it was very close to the center of my chest. I said, Oh, and she goes, here, put your hand on it. So I put my hand on it. I mean, it felt like a little ball. Um, and so she said, do you drink a lot of caffeine? Do I drink a lot of caffeine? Of course I drink a lot of caffeine. Mm -hmm. I have a, a, a two and a, a four-year-old at home, and it's COVID, and I'm trying to survive. Yes. And she's like, well, it's probably nothing. You can get these little cysts from high caffeine drinks, you know, whatever. So I said, okay, no, no worries. And she was like, I'm going to send you down to ultrasound just in case. Okay. So I go downstairs to ultrasound. I get in the room. The ultrasound mm -hmm. tech puts the scanner on my chest. And maybe for three seconds, she puts it back down and she walks out the room. And I'm thinking, that's odd. Um, and so she came back in the room and she goes, we're going to do a mammogram. And at that point, I was like, okay, obviously they're just trying to get a better picture of this and in the meantime you're texting me this kind of yeah a little bit a like, little bit why, like, not why, really like we're not worried but you're like not worried I'm, yeah and so i go sit in the waiting room and you know I, when you look back at this you can see god winks everywhere if you think about it and talk about the story every time and while i was in the waiting room i had actually seen um a parent 
a mom from St. Jude where I work. She was going in and had the same thing, getting in an, another exam. And I was talking to her and she's like, don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. So then I go in for a mammogram and they took like one or two pictures here. And then they took like 12 pictures on this side. And then they said, don't get dressed. Just have a seat. Okay. And so they came back again and they took like 12 more pictures, which felt like a hundred more pictures on my right side. And so at that point I said, okay, something's there. We don't know what it is. I knew I, no one's really going to know what it is. So they told me to dress out, um, dress back in. And they said, but don't leave. You're going to go sit with the radiologist. Okay. So I get dressed and I go sit in with the um, radiologist. And they said, he said, look, I can't tell you that this is cancer because we haven't biopsied it. But it's supposed to look like a balloon. Imagine a balloon that has soft, um, round edges, and yours does not. Yours looks like it has hair coming all over it. He goes, but of course, we have to biopsy it. So I'm going to send you back to your OBGYN, and she's going to recommend you to an oncologist, a breast oncologist. I said, okay, that's fine. So I go back upstairs to see Dr. Boudreau, and she comes out with a card of a breast oncologist, and she goes, you're going to go right now. <laughs> okay. So I leave her office again, and I go back down to a breast oncologist, and my husband met me there, and they took a biopsy, um, and it was a Thursday, and so they said they weren't going to have anything back until after the weekend, and that weekend was actually Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. And so I did not want to concern anyone, so I told her, I said, we're not telling anybody anything. We don't know what this is. We don't know if it is anything at all. We'll, we'll be fine. So um, within three hours of my appointment, I was sitting with a breast oncologist and getting a biopsy. And sure enough, when I went back the next week on the Tuesday, I had to go by myself it's because it was COVID. And uh, the breast oncologist came in and told me, she said, yep, it's cancer. And so at that point, I was just, I thought, I'm just glad it's not my kids, because if there's anyone that can get through it, it's me. And can you tell everybody what your diagnosis was and your treatment plan? Yeah, it was um, invasive ductal carcinoma. Um, it was only stage one. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. She found it so early, but it was invasive, meaning that it had spread. Um, and so um, I had a double mastectomy. I had to go through um, like six months of chemo every other week. And let's talk about the double mastectomy because for me as your mother, yeah. I couldn't be there. Couldn't be there. Could not be there. So it was I, a really intense I went surgery. Crazy. I went crazy. I was losing my mind because I couldn't be there. And I actually um, snuck into the hospital, got in there and got to see you. <laughs> yeah. She... Near, and, and let me just tell you something. What, nobody was going to stop me. No, it was... And I got in there to see you, and I had to see you. Yeah, it was a pretty intense surgery. Um, I really mean, I've had my gallbladder taken out, and I've had two C-sections from having children. And I will say, waking up and being completely handicapped, not being able to move your body, upper extremities at all, you feel so helpless. I was very, very sick. You couldn't hold your baby no more. I couldn't hold. I did. You don't realize how much you hold your children until you can't hold them at all. Um, and so moving forward while I was recovering, um, I had drains. I had two on this side and two on this side. Um, that and I my, don't, don't uh, want me to interrupt, yeah. but like if there's anybody listening, tell them what you use because you have to have drain bags. Drain bags. Um they're, they they actually have pockets that you can put inside your robe or your shirt that you wear because they will give you a front latched um, Velcro bra that has hooks. But any type of like hanging of the the um, drain and it pulling on the holes of your skin is so painful. And so um, you know you put them in these little pockets. My cousin Abby had sent from her mom who had had a double mastectomy. And you put them in your clothing, and it was fantastic. We had a shower seat. We changed the head of the shower so that it was a detachable shower head because I could not bathe myself. Um, and I also, you can't 
sit in a bathtub because you won't be able to pick yourself up to get out of the bathtub. Um, and so the shower seat was great. My sister would bathe me. She would pull the shower head down and shower me. Um, and that was, uh, you have to have help. You can't bathe yourself. Um, and then someone to dump your drains, which, you know, it was all not glamorous, not glamorous in, in any, any way. Um, and also because of COVID, which was so terrible, you had to go to chemo alone. By, alone. No one could sit with you. No. I remember after, I remember distinctly after your first chemo, you were like, my, my, your face burned. Yeah. And you to this day, when you get hot, you have burns. Oh. Because they ran, I guess the chemo was running a little too fast. And I guess you didn't have anybody. Like, if I would have been sitting there, I would have noticed, like, that. And I would have said right. something. But you were alone. And, yeah. I mean, the nurses were great. They did everything. You, you That's the one snacks, thing you told me. Yeah. But, I mean, it is um, not the most glamorous room to be in. You have women in there who are dying. Um, but they try and make it as best as possible. They're caring you have warm blankets. Um, you have to put your hands and ice and your toes and ice so your fingernails and your toenails don't fall off. You get the neuropathy pretty bad. Um, yeah, I mean, and then you have to watch everything you eat. I got lockjaw. It was a whole slew of things. And, like, also the miso, the Trader Joe's miso, miso soup. soup. I think I bought more miso soup from Trader Joe's. That was my go-to. That was our go-to <laughs> for chemo. After chemo, that's all you could hold down and laying in that recliner. Recliner. The recliner was the after best After the thing. double mastectomy. You was, couldn't get in that bed. There was I couldn't no get way. in my bed. Mm -hmm. I slept in a recliner for about four months. I almost had to train myself to sleep back in a bed because I had gotten so used to sleeping in a recliner. And to this day, I still sleep on my back. Because I was forced to sleep on my back for so long and I couldn't turn left or right. And so now it's like I'm just, I trained myself to sleep on my back, which I guess is great for wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your, like for both, I think for our whole family, I think for me especially and you, our faith journey with this has been incredible. Of course. Um their, I mean, Sister Dulcy and their ministry, ministry has been overly generous to us. Always. S always. Um, but maybe you can talk about some of your writings and and your, you know, I know you have such a deep faith with, like, Mother Mary, how important. I mean, Pearl, your daughter, like, unbelievable loving Mother Mary. Yes. Um, Padre, Padre, Padre Pio. Pio um, those kind of things. You want to... Yeah, I mean, Kinda. I always have had faith being a collegiate athlete. I knew that my talent wasn't me alone, that everything that I did, I always gave glory to God. And so I knew in the hard times or anytime I got anxious or nervous while being a college athlete that I could lean on him. He was mm -hmm. always there for me. So there was never a doubt in my mind that when I got sick, that I could turn this pain and suffering into good. I just didn't realize that fighting to live felt so much like dying. And so for me, it was um, a mindset of digging so deep into my faith. Everywhere I looked, every book that I read, every song that I listened to on K-Love, um, everything had to be um, based around my faith and around God. And I prayed every day. And I knew that cancer wasn't a curse, but it was a blessing. Yep. Because I knew that I was going to find the good in the suffering. And that's what you have to do. We all carry a cross. Every single person that you see walking down the street, walking in a store, every person has a cross. Mine, cancer. And so I had to figure out how to navigate the pain and the suffering and use it for good and to find the joy in what I was doing. And I did. And you did. And yeah, I was, I was amazed by that. So I'm going to tell a story. I'm probably going to cry. Oh, <laughs> so we're in the car. And I don't know if you remember this. We're in the car. And Pearl's in the back, probably listening to... Dancing in the moonlight. We were always listening to that. Music. 
or Ann Wilson, you know, yep. just jamming. And we were in carpool line. And we were at St. Jude. And I'm like, I'm wearing my sunglasses. And I think you saw tears coming out my eye. And I'm like, doing that. I don't want Pearl to know I'm crying. We're picking up Carter from school. And I was driving you around at that time so you could be a part of everything. And I was like, I am so mad at God. I was so mad. I said I that like, a lot. <laughs> I know. I did. I, I said it all the time. Sister and them helped me with that. But I was so mad. And I was like sitting in this parking lot at a Catholic school. And how can how can this happen to my child? Like, why not me? Like, why not me? Why not? I mean, unfortunately, I was like, why not anybody else but my kid? I mean, that's how I felt. And you looked at me and you were like, Mom. This is this isn't like a curse. It's a blessing, like you told right, me. Right, it's a blessing. And I was, I looked at you like you had three heads. Like I was like, <laughs> what the heck is wrong with my child? Like this is not a blessing. She's like, Mom, but some people leave this earth and they never get a chance to be close to God, and we get to be close to God. Thank and God. Thank God, because Lord knows I needed to get closer to God. We all do. Yep. I remember that day so clearly, and I remember thinking, you're so wise. You're so wise. It was just we had some hard times back then. They were some hard days. Yep. And your strength was just, God got us through it. I'm Absolutely. Just, All he's, glory. He's the only one Absolutely. that could have given it. And Miss Gloria. Miss Gloria Etheridge. And all of our yep. friends and family, family, party girls, my best friends in the world, all all my good friends that, that were there for us. Absolutely. All right. So mm-hmm. enough about, I'm sorry I made everybody cry, made my daughter cry. I'm sorry. But that okay. was such a pivotal moment in my life because I was like, here's somebody who everything's getting taken from her right now. And you have to find she's joy. giving it to God. And saying we're so lucky that we get to be closer to God. Yep. And you know, I pray the rosary every single day just about now. I try to go to mass almost every if I can. If I can make it, I do. Those are things that I didn't do before this. And I'm so I'm so blessed that yeah, I get to do, like those yeah. are things I've getting to right. experience and it's going to help me. Trust. Trust and all that. You have that. to trust that he will carry you through and you know, it was it was also seeing Miss Gloria at Sisters Ministry and almost becoming comfortable with the thought that if I die, it's okay. It's not okay, but okay. <laughs> but it's that's you not look okay. Forward. Just the man of that's not okay. <laughs> you look you look at this we get this earthly life and we're so blessed to have this earthly life and to be together. But what we should all strive for is life eternal. And oh yeah, that's, eternal life is, is everything. That's and, what I kind of looked forward to, and that's kind of what gave me the strength. Was okay. So, although I'm suffering, I can offer up for souls in purgatory. And although, mm-hmm. you know, this is not how I pictured my life going, I'm gonna find joy where I'm at, Absolutely. and I'm gonna strive to trust Him and for Him to guide and and get closer to being able to recognize when he's talking to me so that, you know, I can live um, here and sacrifice whatever I need to sacrifice so I can get to heaven and live eternally. All of us. And with him. And also it's taught us and it's taught me this. Slow down. I like if you call me, I call you every day. I want to hang out with you every day. I want to be up your butt every day. Every day. But anyways, it's. (laughs) Like to even like today, how we took our little trip to New Orleans, and it's just that's all you have is like, today. Today, let's that's go it. eat the pizza. Let's go to get the beignets. <laughs> let's make memories that's it. every day. Let's right. just make me and just be thankful we are we're, that we're all here and we're together and we're healthy. Yeah. Gratitude is taught me that. So, let's talk about your recovery. Um, what are some of the things? Because like your reco- like the, the work starts now. Like you're working now to recover. Even like. Every single day. I know you've been three years cancer-free. Thank you, Jesus. Um, You know, you have no hormones. (laughs) We just got done having to get your your test, and that's always an an anxiety. But now, you know, since I've become more faithful, I'm like, she's going to be fine. Fine. God's 
not as good, she's going to be fine. Taking your tamoxifen, all the side effects, the emotional toll it takes on you. Right. The tiredness. Um, so I know those are all the things that you go, because I'm, I'm with you almost every day. Right. So I know that's what you're going through. I don't know if there's something I missed. Well, I mean, it, it's almost as though they give you, you get cancer and you get diagnosed. So you yes. have this clear checklist. Of, <laughs> this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And you have chemo on this day. And then you go get your blood work on this day. And then you're, you know, you have your this and that. And it's a clear checklist. And then you ring the bell and they're like, go live. Speaking about ringing the bell, and I did forgot to bring this up. So, you fin you find she finally got to finish chemo. I'm gonna let you tell the story, but she finally gets to finish, and her husband had to sneak in the sneak hospital, in the hospital. <laughs> and, and to be with me when I be, rang the so bell, so she could just be there to ring. Which you know, with all that COVID stuff, it, it, you know that I can go. That's a whole nother show with that. Yeah, I just kind of felt. As though um, like you, I never worried about COVID because I felt like cancer already put my life on a timeline. Absolutely. And I wasn't going to allow COVID to take that from me. Absolutely. And it was fascinating how many people I was around while my immune system was so extremely low that had COVID and I never got it. Isn't that crazy? And I believe that was the Lord again. God protected you. Protected me Absolutely. because I wasn't going to lose time with family. Because of that. I'm still like that to this day. No, we, we keep our faith with Strong. Him. With um, him. But yeah, I mean, recovery was really tough. And it, they throw you out into the world. And it's like you're expected to um, just live. And you've gone no, no, through it, yeah. so much trauma that it takes a little while to process it. And then on top of that... You have everyone who shares their opinions about what you need to eat, <laughs> what you need to drink. What are you brushing your teeth with? What are, you know, and it's it's really really overwhelming um, at once because you're trying to figure that out for yourself internally while trying to be normal for your children um, and your and, husband and your husband. Yeah, everything. I mean, um, and it, it's hard to navigate. I think a, a, about a year after, the whole year after I was diagnosed, it was just figuring myself out. Okay, what works? What doesn't, what doesn't work? work um, accepting the way that my body looks. Um, that's a whole nother deal. Accepting my new hair. Um, and it's, it's hard to, the hair was a thing. The hair was a big thing. <laughs> um, but you rocked every look, the bald, uh, the, just every look, it, the dark hair, the short with the headbands. I mean, you, you just did. I don't, I mean, you I am it who all. I am. No, and you didn't, you didn't do the wig. I, I mean, didn't really like the wigs. Oh, the wigs are hot and itchy. You don't yeah. want those wigs, but I mean, you rocked it. And I will say, I think. The, the hair thing, you know, uh, my kids were two and four when I went through everything. And and I didn't specifically tell them I have cancer. I, you know, I said I got, you know, bobos on my boobies. Yeah. And they made me sick. And the medicine I take makes my hair fall out. But it's funny how those every kid processes trauma differently. Yep. And so for them, the hair was a huge deal. Oh, it was. When I shaved my head, they had to leave the house um, and go to a neighbor's house because they were so upset. And when I went to get my hair trimmed, when it was finally grown back in and colored, um, they lost it. They cried. Oh, Pearl freaked. They don't. They didn't want me to do anything to my hair. They asked if I was going to be bald again. And, you know, it was a... That was a trauma for them and how they digested it. And I can remember walking Pearl up to class at Mother's Day out and little kids, I mean, they're two years old, pointing and saying, why does her mommy not have hair? And I would look at Pearl and be like, they're so silly. But for her, it was a trauma. And so to this day, if they hear me talking about going to get my hair done, they still ask, are you going to have hair when you come back home? Is, is the medicine you're taking going to make you lose your hair? And so, you know, we just got to kind of, the hair bald is thing. beautiful. It is. But and that's what I tried to tell them. And that's why I didn't wear a wig. And it's okay to not have hair. There's people who don't. People, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I remember this too. I remember Pearl had a little Barbie, a bald Barbie. Yeah. And she was, she had her little bike with the training wheels. And God bless her. She would just put that little 
bald Barbie in the seat of that little bike, and we would go for a bike ride, and she always had her little, because, you know, I kept them a lot when you were sick. Yeah. So right. it was like a way, I guess, her way of being close to her mommy mm -hmm. with the bald Barbie. I mean, yep. you know, and then I was in her room not too long ago, and she's like, honey, you can just get rid of that bald Barbie. <laughs> Like, okay. We We're, moved past. We it. are done with the ball Barbie. <laughs> She's not, we don't like her no more. You know, so yeah. But also I wanted to um also would continue just to help, gosh, you know, if there's anybody out there that's listening, um, how, you know, you saw, you know, you're taking the vitamins and, you know, you exercise in the hyperbaric chamber and yeah. Is there anything you can extend on that? Like I I think you have to do the holistic what the doctor says, you know, your oncologist says, I just think you have to do your, it's like a tons work and like clean creations on, right. on Highland diet. right there. Your diet's huge. It's everything. And, and like, it's hard. sometimes you don't have time to cook healthy and do these well, elaborate meals. I can't meals. cook multiple, multiple no, meals. No, because the kids are so picky right, right now. But like, I just thought that was, um, I saw a function, functional medicine doctor, Dr. Stephanie Cave. She's here in Baton Rouge. I was familiar with her before I even got diagnosed um, with, I took my children to her. And um, basically my goal was to figure out, break down my blood and figure out where am I lacking? Okay. I don't have hormones. I don't have this. So obviously my mood's going to be a certain type of way and I don't want to have to take a antidepressant. I don't want to have to take an anxiety medication. I don't want to have to take those types of things because everything you take, every cause has an effect, right? That's the medical world. My husband always tells me that every cause has an effect. And so we broke down my blood and we looked at it and figured out, okay, you need to take this B complex with MSM 750. And, you know, I take probably 20 something supplements a day. And Juice Plus. We I do, do Juice, juice, yeah. juice Plus um, every day. And I do the clean creations pretty much every day. Oh, we love that And I place, find yeah. that if I ever miss my vitamins or, you know, eat unhealthy as I did today with the beignets, oh, yeah. I'm not my best self. And so I find it so important to take the vitamins and to stay on top of eating clean and eating good sugars and not bad sugars. Mm -hmm. And um, that's like, cause I brought you those donuts. Yes. From Crinkly. And they're like, creations are you great can have donuts. that. You can you have can, all those things. But they, they cook, they make them healthy. It's just like I had those little power balls and they were so good. And right. it was, it was good sugar. It wasn't right. bad. So it's shakes. I do a lot of shakes cause I don't like the textures of fruits and vegetables. <laughs> and I add dates and blueberries and pro a little protein to it. So, um, it's taken a collection of things to get me where I am and hopefully build my immune system up so that the cancer can't fight or work itself in um, to my body. And so I'm very thankful for the holistic side. And um, I, I think I truly do think what you put in your body is what fuels you and keeps you going. And I mean, it took a long time to get my muscle mass back. Um, I'm, yeah, you're working out. I'm working it. out at Cajun CrossFit, and I absolutely love it. I'm still running all the time, um, and it's just um, I'm tired, and it yeah. takes a lot more effort to do these things. But again, I want to live, and so um, that's and what it takes. And you're gonna live. I'm gonna live. She's gonna, I'm gonna live. be fine. And I also want to talk about how you know we love K Love now, and how we we just feel. The car with Jesus every chance we get because when when the kids are listening to music, we want them to hear right. the good stuff. I mean, right. don't, don't get me wrong, we hear we listen to other things, but and like during our whole journey and Wilson, that song. Let me tell you about and Lauren my, Daigle and for that, me, yeah, Lauren Daigle. Well, and, and Pearl. Wilson was bi was big, and that one song. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Yeah, I cry every time I hear that it, that song. Yeah, I read something the other day. You are an average of the five people that you surround yourself with. And I started thinking, okay, what do I surround myself with? And it's like, <laughs> you have to surround yourself with, even if you don't have five solid people, the music you listen to, the TV mm -hmm. that you watch, the books that you read, are those all what you want to be an influence on your life? And so 
you know, I'm I'm very much into like murder mystery shows and things like that. But I said, you know, I need to stop so much into that and really surround myself with those five things to keep me in oh. the the whole realm of my spirituality and things like that. So K Love is obviously the only thing I listen to besides my rosary podcast or the Bible in a year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I indulge in the Lord. Absolutely. Every day because he's the one that keeps me on the path of eternal life and glory and to live each day with a grateful heart. 100%. So the other thing I wanted to talk about, one more thing, probably two more things, is um, how good the bus breast Bus breast experience cancer. was yes. for you and your friends. Yes. You ma- Oh, my gosh, I love your little friends you made from yes. From that, I mean, just... Plus little, breast cancer. Yes. There's a lot of... Um, they did such a good job for y'all. Yes. They really do. There's a lot of um, balls that, uh, you know, donate to cancer, this and that. And, you know, I find with having breast cancer in the month of October comes around, there's so many companies that do what they call pink washing. So they put the pink emblem on this or the pink emblem on that. And it's like, are they really raising money and sending it to a uh, cancer services for women who are suffering with breast cancer? Or are they just putting it out there and saying, this is what we're going to do and not do it. And it's a very big forum that a lot of breast cancer survivors are very big on the pink washing and they don't agree with it. And, um, you know, there's a couple of balls in town that do the whole cancer thing. And when I got, Um, asked to do the bust breast cancer oh gosh for me I was really skeptical because I'm not one to put on a costume and just dance out on the stage (laughs) and stuff it's totally not me yes you are and and, um and so for me I was really nervous about it and and skeptical of it at first and Mike Millsfall was my designer and he was fantastic and made me feel really comfortable and so we went with the whole track suit runner um theme the number what's a pic i think it's a picture yeah the number eight zero zero eight five so it looked like boobs you know (laughs) um and the the track suit was really cool and i felt i had a hat with a fake long blonde ponytail and so i got on that stage and it you just feel so liberated and you're celebrating with other survivors and they recognize all the other survivors at the end everyone gets and on your the doctor stage doctor was there my doctors all her doctors were, were there. there it's so supportive I so not, supportive yeah. and the money goes back to giving women mammograms who can't afford it and um, i just fully support the and event you had such good friends such I'm- good friends lindsay and rayana and um, you know, just everyone who's involved in that entire program only want, has had breast cancer. They all have been there. And they, so they we all it. relate to each other on a level that not many people get. You know, you don't want to relate to us on that level. But, um, yeah, it is a fantastic organization. I love it. I fully support it. And um, I believe they're doing the right thing with, with, their, with their money. Yeah, and we've had so many supportive people that, like, I've, it's, I mean, I I went to Walgreens, and I'm friends with some of the women in there, and they would pray with me. Um, I have so many people who pray for me. I mean, that would just, like, they didn't even hardly know Mm, me. Yeah. And they would just start praying with me for you when you were sick. I have a lot of people who pray for me. Like, just, there's so many good people out there that. There are just so many good people out there. Absolutely. And we're um, thankful for all of them. We're so thankful for everybody that is in our life that have helped us. And we're very thankful for our little Esther that we had lost a Dutch. Um, you lost yeah. a Dutch during Dutch that was time. my chocolate lab who yeah. I had since I was 19. And he passed away. And so... As um, he was sitting with you... On the front porch. Faithfully. Coffee. Yeah, drinking coffee. He was my man. And me and my husband, Orion, that was our first child. And um, then. He died during that. Yeah, we had a good friend who gave us Essie, who's a Mr. toy. Mr. Bill. Pick. Mr. Bill <laughs> gave us Essie. And Essie has brought so much joy and so much um, keeping it real. Yeah. <laughs> I see. I know. I know. Sometimes, a, you know, a dog is a good distraction, though. Absolutely. The kids think, love her. The, it's, they, that dog has been so good. That's another thing. Something to 
think something else to think about besides what you're going through right. at the time. Right. But um And I, I I think, you know, I would get chemo on Wednesday. I'd still run carpool and do mom duty until Friday. And then you would step in, take the kids Friday to Sunday. And I only gave myself, you know, Saturday and Sunday to be sick. And then I got back up and I was in carpool and doing me life. driving you around listening to the Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so we were doing that's that's exactly what we we're doing. But anyways, um, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Um, I know it's an emotional thing to talk about, but like if any of this can help anybody, it's it's so worth it. And if right? I can help anyone, oh, absolutely. Like, questions, please reach out. Please. I mean, because that's you want to help people. Because I know. Thank God that. You know, we had some family men. Not thank God, we had family. We that's so sad. They went through it too, but um, they were so key, and they were like, "You need this, you need that." And I can't imagine if those people, Cindy, Aunt Susan, Abby, they getting were, all the list of things that I needed, getting it to me. I mean, what would we have done? I, don't I, know. I would have been lost and in mm. trouble and not bathed for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't have been bathed. Yeah, you would have been bathed. Shout out to my sister for oh bathing my gosh, me I know, the whole I know. time. Oh no. Um, and my husband who who drained my drains and loved me bald on the floor. <laughs> oh God, I don't even want to talk about those days. Um. So but, yeah. But it, anyway, it was a whole deal. But, but I'm we're, so we're thankful good. for it. We're healthy. We are. And she's healthy now. And um. She's going to stay healthy. So, um, but yes, thank you. Thank absolutely. you for sharing. I appreciate you yes. sharing. I know that's personal. It can yes. be hard, but I appreciate it. And you wanted to talk about your butterfly earrings? Oh, oh. <laughs> My butterfly earrings. We have to talk about these because the butterfly has such a special meaning. Tell them real quick. Yeah, before I we just, go. I've always related to the butterflies because I've always said, you know, I feel like a butterfly. It was through the painful process that I really came out of the cocoon and realized who I was and what was important in my life. And I'm grateful for the painful process of becoming one. So um, I relate to the butterfly and every, I'm telling you, every day I see butterflies. Whether I'm driving, going down the road, butterfly. I'm running, butterfly. And so I just feel like those are my God winks that like he hears me, he sees me, he's with me which I know, but it's always helpful when you have the butterfly that you see. Absolutely. So I love the butterfly. It means a lot to me. Dad, do you have anything to say? You've been quiet. <laughs> yeah, I want to say I love you both, and thank you so much for sharing deeply and wholly and faithfully with all of us through all of this. So it's, it's uh, been a blessing, and it will continue to be one. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Right. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you.